What's going on everybody, welcome back. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Springfield St. Victor rifle here. This is the B5 version. So talking about the Springfield St. Victor rifle, there are some things I like about it. There are a couple things maybe I don't like about it or I think they could have done a little bit better. Now as it goes for the Springfield St., uh, this B5 version of it, you do get some really nice stuff on here. And some of those kind of nice things that it does come with are going to be the B5 Systems grip and the stock on here. You got a really nice flat face trigger from the factory that is NP3 coated. You've got a lot of M-Lock rail to work with and a really nice break from Springfield Armley directly. You got those flip up sights and a couple of other nice options. And of course that big old Springfield Saint logo on there. Now you do get a couple of other really nice options on this thing, uh, but I know everybody's kind of aching to know how did it perform on the range and what did I use? So I slapped my EOTech on this thing and I went to work with it out there. And we'll check that out right now. All right, so now that you've seen a little bit of that range footage, let's take a nice up close look at this thing, get into some of those more fine details like the weight of it, the trigger pull, and some of the other little things that they did put into this. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. If you are not, give the video a like if you are into it and definitely turn the bell notification icons on so you get the notifications when these videos come out. We're gonna go ahead and get into the finite details of this Springfield Saint B5 right now. All right, let's jump into the St. Victor B5 rifle. So they offer this in a couple different versions. This is the black. They do have flat dark earth. One uh, has some Magpul furniture. One has Bravo Company furniture. And this one has a B5. Totally up to you what you choose. Lower receiver and the butt stock here first. Mil spec receiver tube here. All the positions you're looking for, okay. B5 systems, you got that nice padded uh, back end on it for you people like me with the weak shoulders, don't want that stuff impinging on you. <laughs> you got some QD points here, real standard. It's that Sotmod style, you got that nice cheek weld on there for those of us that like to shoot canted a little bit or just have that nice high cheek hold on it like you should. You got some storage compartments down in there. Uh, flip this around so you can see that has been uh, staked. God, I forgot the word there. So they have staked to the castle nut here, uh, which has the QD receiver end plate, which is awesome because that's what I run. But if you don't know what staking is, they basically take a tool and they hit that tool with a hammer and it sends a little tiny piece of metal into one of the little openings on your castle nut so that can never back off. Got a heavy tungsten buffer in there. Move forward, we'll talk about that B5 Systems grip right here. Much less aggressive angle much more uh, in line with today's shooting styles. We do have that short throw, fully ambidextrous safety right there, which is very nice. I didn't expect that the first time I flipped it and I thought I about tore my thumb off because I kept trying to yank that thing forward. I just wasn't paying attention. Move forward, we got that really nice nickel boron coated trigger group, every single piece of it. Nickel boron NP3, that stuff is absolutely awesome. Adds lubricity properties. Um, anti-corrosion stuff. It is really just good stuff. Again, you get that B5 Systems um, uh, trigger guard here, the extended one, so you can get your finger in there a little lower on that trigger. If you're wearing gloves, helps as well. The rest of that forward part here, it's all gonna be your standard mil spec stuff. And then of course, Springfield's gotta let you know that it is the Springfield Armory Saint. A little bit of texture in there. Not bad, good to go here. Go ahead and talk about this upper mil spec charging handle. Getting into the bolt here, 9310 steel. That's strong, tough stuff. That's what you are looking for when it comes to a bolt. This thing is going to give you years and thousands of rounds of life. You got that little Springfield logo in there. I know it's a little shiny because it's wet because I cleaned it and oiled it like you're supposed to do. When it comes to this, it's properly staked. So you can see the uh, staking marks up in there where these the bolts are for the gas key here. That needs to be there, otherwise this thing will work itself loose. Uh, if you guys don't know, this is the carrier. This is actually the bolt right here. That's why it's called a bolt and carrier group. Now the actual bolt itself, you can see the marking on there. It is magnetic particle inspected. Okay, moving forward, 
Uh, let's go ahead and knock the sights out of the way. So we've actually got some decent all metal flip up sights. Uh, one little weird thing, uh, just kind of bugs me, I guess a little bit, just that little bit of play in it right there when it's in the down position. Push the button, they flip up, they do lock, okay? So you have to push the button to get them back down. The front is the same way as I swing this around right here. Goes right up, locks in place, and then you have to push the button in to retract it. They're solid, they're actually really nice sights. Um, I don't know why, that just, that bugs me a little bit. Probably wouldn't bug anybody else, but it's just something that I happen to notice. They are serrated on the front right there. I don't know if that was for technically, I guess, anti-glare, or just in case you rest that front side on something, which I don't know why you would do that, but hey, both front and the rear have those serrations up in there. Uh, you got standard uh, team marked upper right there. I've got my EOTech on it. You do get a couple of additional slots that work forward onto the rail. You can see right there, you got the 15 and 16 slot. Uh, different kind of M-lock rail, how it attaches in here. Very nice, 15 inches. Uh, you can put anything you want on this thing is a chromoly vanadium barrel, 16 inches, with a pinned gas block. So you can see that pin right there. That is gonna give you the ultimate in reliability. One and eight twist rate, like I said, 5.56 five, NATO. You can shoot 223, wild, whatever you want through it. Um, it's gonna work. Got the M4 feed ramps, and again, that uh, Springfield logo down inside there on the barrel. Working forward, actually got a really nice break on this thing. Now that's the Springfield proprietary one. So either they're making it or they're having a company make it for them. And it's solid. It's good stuff. Uh, both the upper and the lower are forged uh, 7075 T6 aluminum, uh, type 3 hard anodized coated. It's all good stuff here. Uh, I don't know if I went over it or not, but you've actually got that little tension screw. See that green thing down in there? That's actually a polymer head to a screw that's up underneath your grip so you can actually tighten that a little bit and get these two to sit super stiff on each other between the upper and the lower. So they did a good job here. They did some good stuff on this rifle. Got your standard kind of, you know, mil spec -y take up, that's normal. Um, go ahead, you're gonna have, I wanna say probably, it's about the same, so maybe two and a half, three millimeters, if that. And then a nice clean break. Does really break well, which is what I would expect. Now the reset on this thing, right there. And I mean, it like, it literally, it almost throws your finger off that. I don't know what springs are using here, but it feels to me like they might be using a little bit of a stronger spring in there. So again, that little mil spec -y take up we're all used to, right there. Rolling brake, pull through it. And then that really aggressive reset on there. So I mean, that thing is gonna get out there and you can get moving on it. Let's go ahead and do some pull tests. Um, and just so you guys know, kind of explain this up front, the lower on that trigger you get, the lighter it is. And I will demonstrate that here in a minute once we get our basic pulls done. Reset this gauge. And I'm gonna go from about right there on that trigger. And I'm gonna try and get the same place each time so we can be relatively even. So that was a little bit over five and a half pounds, like, I don't know, maybe five pounds, eight, nine ounces, something like that. That's a little bit higher than I expected. I have gotten it a little bit lower, pulling off that same point. So we'll do three pulls and then I'll show you what I'm talking about when it comes to getting lower on that trigger. Okay, so that was more along what I expected and that's about five pounds and six ounces. So we'll do one more. Keep my hand on this thing this time. Okay, so that was about the same, five pounds, four and a half, maybe five ounces, right in that area. Now talking about getting lower on that trigger, let's do it right now. I'm gonna get way down here in this flat part since we've got that extended, uh, or I guess more oblong trigger guard and show you that it'll break quite a bit lower. So we're right there, uh, sorry for the light, but we're right there about four and a half pounds. And if I get a little bit lower, might even get a little lower than that. Say so I get right down there in that part. So that one broke almost exactly at four and a half pounds. So moral of the story, lower you get your finger on that, the lighter that trigger pull is going to be. So let's go ahead and we're gonna talk about what I like, what I don't like, and what I would change on this thing. 
So now that you've got a really good look at that thing up close, I wanna say this thing is coming in just over $1,000. I saw it for like, I think 1,064 or something. And that can fluctuate because things are still really weird right now, especially when it comes to ammo. So I just don't know where it's gonna be or if that's where it's gonna stay or if it's gonna go up or if it's gonna go down because things are just kind of crazy right now. And I think we've all kind of come to understand that for the next several months of our lives, hopefully it's only a couple months longer, that things are just gonna stay weird. Now, when it comes into my likes and my dislikes on this rifle, um, there are a lot of things I like, and there's a couple of things that I may just change a little bit or maybe tweak some of the parts that came with it. Now, some of those likes are gonna be the brake. Now, a brake like this, although it may be annoying to the person to the left and right of you, may give a little bit more punishment to the light you would have out there, but it's nice. It does calm this rifle down quite a bit, combined with that mid-length gas system and that nice long rail to get a hold of. You're really gonna be able to control this thing and get those super fast follow-up shots. And continuing with the front end of this thing, the pinned gas block. Now, a lot of manufacturers out there don't pin them. Some of them don't even dimple the barrel. It really depends on what the manufacturer is going to do. Now, a pinned gas block is generally going to be the utmost in reliability, as long as everything else in that weapon system is built up to snuff. And of course, that flat-faced trigger right there, for me, it's kind of weird. Uh, sometimes on rifles, I like curved triggers better, but like on pistols, I always like flat face triggers. That's kind of weird. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that. If you have, let me know in the comments which one you actually prefer. Now, as far as the workmanship and the quality of materials, the chrome alloy vanadium barrel and the 9310 steel bolt and carrier group in there, those are definitely good things to look for when you're buying a rifle. There are some companies out there that do use, I guess to say not necessarily inferior, but maybe a lesser high grade steel, I guess you could say, in some of their rifles or barrels. Is that necessarily gonna be a bad thing? Well, I don't know, it kind of depends. Are you looking at running this thing as a machine gun? Or are you looking at running it really hard? Or is it gonna kind of be a minimal plinker? Because those are gonna go into what type of steel in the barrel and bolt or whatever that you're gonna be looking for when you buy a rifle. Now, jumping into a couple of those things that I would change, one of which being the grip. Although I really like that minimal angle that it has because it's far better for today's shooting styles, give me the little storage compartment because I do have NFA stuff and if I ever did want to form one this, I like to be able to stick a copy of that paperwork up in there should anybody ever come asking questions that I may have to answer right up front. And this is kind of just a nitpicky thing is that little bit of movement in the front and the rear sight like that when they're locked down in place. And that probably has to do with how they're designed and the spring tension in there. Uh, it's just kind of one of those like little weird things that kind of annoys me a little bit once you notice it. And it just kind of sticks with you, you know? And if you've ever had that on something, let me know in the comments what it is. Now, my only other really, I guess you could say kind of a big thing is the charging handle. It's just kind of a standard, well, it's not kind of a standard, it's just your standard mil spec charging handle. I really would have liked to have seen uh, something like a Raptor, ambidextrous, or at least an extended charging handle. And that's just me. I, I do like ambidextrous ones. I do like ones that have a little bit more meat to grab onto because the size of my hands coming in here and getting around all this stuff uh, isn't always great, especially if I'm wearing gloves. Um, some people may not suffer from having big gorilla hands like me. But I do, so I really do like an extended or at least ambidextrous charging handle. And the only other little thing I could mention is that logo, okay, the Springfield Saint logo. You guys can see on there, that's big. Um, it's bigger than the logo I got on my mags there that my buddy at Bentline Laser did for me. Uh, I'm not really a huge logo guy. It's really nitpicking at that point, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, I kind of like things super sleek, but a lot of companies uh, from Seekins to Springfield and a bunch of others are using those really kind of bigger logos. So that's kind of, you know, maybe you're into it, maybe you're not, but that's just one of those things that I happen to notice. All in all, I do think you are getting what you pay for in this uh, St. Victor rifle. That, you know, just over a thousand dollar point point, that's pretty good. There are some more expensive, there are some far more expensive, and there are some that are literally half the price of this. Um, and a lot of times you're gonna get what you pay for. Now there are some super values out there, and there are a lot of things that are just really cheap and they're just not gonna continue running or maybe they're made with inferior parts or maybe they're just not quite as machined as nice as other things. And that's really gonna be up to you as the buyer. You may not have the ability to afford something that's in this price range and there is nothing wrong with that. If you can afford something um, and it's in your capabilities, then buy it as long as it works and runs 
may not look the best, but that's not really what it's all about when it comes to running a rifle for self-protection or the protection of your family. You need something that's just gonna flat out run. So I hope you guys liked learning about this St. Victor rifle here today. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and definitely turn the bell notification icons on. Give the video a like. You guys get out there, enjoy some range time. I know it is super tough on ammo right now and super tough just getting your hands on anything at this point with everything that's been going on in the world. You guys stay safe, stay ready, most of all stay dangerous, and I will see you guys on the next one.